here. We're at uh, Warner Brothers and uh, talking about uh, Batman Arkham Origins. Could you first please introduce yourself to our viewers? Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Ben Mattis. Uh, I'm the senior producer at WB Games Montreal on Batman Arkham Origins. Uh, the title gives it away. It's a prequel to the uh, to the other two Batman games we see. So um, obviously you're going a bit into Batman's background and how it it comes to the to the events in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Um, but also I think you have to do something new. Um, so what can can players expect if they know the the two other games? Sure. Well, I mean, very importantly, Arkham Origins takes place about five years before the events of Arkham Asylum. So there's a lot of room for sort of character growth, and and it, we it, it, that was really important to us. It was really one of the early, it was really one of the exciting things about creating an early career Batman story that we could show evolution of the character, evolution of of Batman himself, and also the sort of key relationships Batman and. Gordon, Batman and Alfred, Batman and Joker, uh, etc. Um, we, the, the, the premise uh, of this story is, is quite a deceptively simple one, I guess you could say. Um, up, up until this point in time in Batman's career, he's just been the best. Uh, he knows how to fight, he's got great gadgets, uh, he's you know, well-trained, um, and everyone in the city, if they know about him, they are absolutely terrified of him. He's an urban legend, he's a myth, he's very, very sort of secretive, and he likes it that way. Um, and that's all changes on the night that our game takes place. It's really sort of the formative night of his career, because it's where he goes from being just a guy in a mask to really starting to become the true Dark Knight, the guy who kind of saves Gotham from these incredibly complicated plots and these incredibly dangerous villains. The real members of the Batman's rogues gallery all start to come out of the woodwork on this night. And what triggers that is that the Black Mask, who's the number one crime lord in all of Gotham, puts a $50 million dollar bounty on Batman's head, one night to kill the Bat. And uh, this attracts eight of the top assassins from the DC universe to Gotham City. And they all come on Christmas Eve with their gangs of mercenaries and thugs and whatnot. And they're, they're sort of steamrolling through the city, tearing it apart, trying to lure Batman out so they can deliver the killing blow and collect the bounty. And so the challenge of having to survive the assassination attempts and, and, and bring these assassins to justice and clean up the streets and defeat all of these gangs and keep them from tearing the city apart and find Black Mask all on this one night, you know, really, it really defines him. It really sort of sets him down that path that fundamentally changes who he is and the, the kinds of challenges that he's going to face moving forward in his career. Um, we saw in the in the presentation just uh, a short time ago that uh, because Batman is not yet who he will be in the in the past games, uh, so he's not just really working with the Gotham, Gotham Police Department, but uh, a bit against them. Sure. Uh, so, uh, is there any any um, any gameplay around that, or is it just another villain group? Uh, no, I mean, definitely the, the role of uh, Captain Gordon, he's not yet commissioner, he's the captain, um, the GCPD, the Gotham City Police Department, uh, Brandon, who's the head of the SWAT department, the role of all of those parties uh, plays very, very distinctly into our story um, because there is animosity there. So on top of everything else that I described previously, assassins and gangs and thugs and everything, everything else, there's also the cops and SWAT that, that Batman has to deal with as well. Um, if you saw recently our Nowhere to Run trailer, the trailer that we just released, you'll notice, you know, the whole premise of that trailer is that he's, he's, he's kind of being attacked on every angle. He's got assassins and thugs and rioting inmates and cops and SWAT officers and everyone is sort of gunning for him this night because he's misunderstood, he doesn't yet have allies, and he's got this, you know, this huge, this huge challenge on his shoulders of, of all the assassins going for him. So definitely those factions that you talked about, cops and SWAT and whatnot, they definitely play in narratively as well as from a gameplay point of view and it creates a wonderful arc for us to show how that relationship between Batman and Gordon can, can start to change and that they can start to, if not necessarily become friends, at least recognize that they're, maybe, they, maybe they don't, how to put it, 
maybe they don't need to see things so completely differently after all. Maybe they have some things in common and, and sort of starting to establish those, those bonds. Okay, um, and because we are uh, from a Nintendo side, uh, the question is, it's all uh, also released on, on Wii U. Yes. Um, how do you use the gamepad? Is there any special uh, thing on the Wii U version? So we haven't announced specifics about the Wii U. Uh, really, in fact, we haven't really announced specifics you know, about any of the platforms. We'll really talk about all of the platforms as, as a single whole. Definitely, you know, we, we sat down, we looked at the Wii U, we talked about what sort of functionality we did want to take advantage of, what sort of functionality we didn't feel was appropriate for the title so there'll be discussions of that at a later point but for now we're not talking about the specifics okay wh what you talked about was that uh, the Wii U version won't have uh, the multiplayer mode uh, why did you come to this decision and don't you think this may be harm the sales on the Wii U version um, the reason behind it, I, you know, I can't speculate on the sales, obviously, but the reason, uh, the reason behind it, you know, simply had to do with um, the, the 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 reality of the the, the uptake and the, the multiplayer uptake on the devices. As you can imagine, creating a multiplayer version and and supporting a multiplayer version and hosting a multiplayer version is a significant cost as a as a publisher um, and you know it, it made the most financial sense to invest our resources into creating that mode on the platforms that had the largest multiplayer communities so that's why we had to choose the ones that we did choose unfortunately you know at the expense of the Wii U we hope the people who do own a Wii U still find lots to love about the version of Arkham Origins that they get Okay, yeah, I can understand that, but it's it's uh, yeah, it's some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy because if no one does a good multiplayer, then no one will buy the game uh, due to the multiplayer. But it's it's understandable. Um, and can you maybe tell us something about uh, playable characters? Uh, we saw one in the 1 to 100 combat. Um, will there be any more, any downloadable contents? So the only ones that we've announced so far are obviously Batman and Deathstroke. Um, Deathstroke is available on the Wii U. He's part of the pre-order campaign as well. So on the Wii U, if you pre-order, you do get that playable character. Um, that's that's all we have to talk about. But you know, hopefully you enjoyed your, your, your time playing with Deathstroke um, and you can kind of see the sort of potential for that character. and, and why we were so excited about bringing that character to players because we really like the way he looks we really like the way he acts and we really like how his 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 abilities translate to the the the, the batman arkham gameplay both uh, free flow combat as well as predator there's a very clean mapping uh that we're you know we're very we're very proud of we're very fond of that character Okay, and uh, one last question, because this is a prequel, you have the opportunity to maybe answer some questions which uh, might be interesting to, to players who played the, the other games. Uh, maybe Batgirl is... A you know what, I can probably answer your question before you even finish asking it. <laughs> the only characters we've talked about so far are the ones we've actually announced. Um, so I, you know, I'm not going to talk about either of those because we've, 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 we just haven't announced them yet. Um, there is, again, five years in between Origins and Asylum. Um, there are characters who don't appear in Origins who do appear, for example, in Blackgate. Uh, and Catwoman, in fact, is one of those characters. It's been announced that Catwoman makes her first appearance in Blackgate, which takes place just a couple of months after the events of Arkham Origins. So certainly there are characters there that we love and we appreciate as well, and we, we, we are interested in telling their early career stories uh, as well, definitely. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.